Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Reggie Segment Podcast. In case you don't know, I'm Reggie. And today, you guys, we are here with a Reggie and Friends podcast. I know for the past couple times, you've seen Mama and I podcast, but I have decided to stop by... Stop by an office of a good friend, you guys. This is a teacher of mine in the past, somebody who introduced me to a, a vocal ensemble that I am so glad I was a part of or even helped start. I don't know if it was the beginning of it or not, but I'm so glad that I was there. And that is none other than the doctor. He's a doctor now, you guys. No longer just professor. Scott Reeker. So put your hands together for him, you guys. Say hello to the people down Hey, Reggie. Thanks, everybody. It's good to be here. <laughs> hey, man. I'm so glad you're here, too. I'm so glad you're here. And you guys, today we will be talking about music. You know, what other thing to talk about than the thing that affects people in such great ways it can bring it can bring upon trauma it can bring upon healing it can bring upon fun times or sad times you guys and just in case you don't know he is a music teacher in case i haven't mentioned it he has his degrees okay degrees and three of them exactly in music okay so you guys we're going to talk about that today but before we get into that how you doing doc how you feel today i'm good it's raining uh Mm -hmm. yeah i'm i'm i might even be coherent (laughs) we'll see how it goes well we gonna hope we gonna hope because it has been nice in frostburg but um today out of all days it decided to to do a little something in the sky You got to have variety, right? Exactly. At least it's not snow, I think we said earlier. Because <laughs> <laughs> if it had been snow, I'd have been mad. It right. snowed all them days back to back to back to back to back. Isn't Even, that why they call it Frostburg? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> we all thought that, but isn't like a Frost family? Yeah, I think okay. it was founded by some Frost. So I think they're buried on Main Street. That is crazy. Yeah, on Main Street. That's not where I would want to be buried. <laughs> that me either. <laughs> all that foot traffic <laughs> walking on my grave. Child, get off my grave. <laughs> Where was music first introduced in our lives? And I thought about this question because I believe, Doc, that me and you both are kind of like on the same page with where music was introduced. But I'm going to let you answer first just to see if I'm on the right path. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. So I can't recall because my family sings. Mm -hmm. We sing in the car. Mm -hmm. We sing in the house. We sing... All the time. So I we sang for as long as I can remember. Mm-hmm. I can remember, you know, when I was two and we're in the car going up to visit grandma and <laughs> we're <laughs> singing something off of Sesame Street or we're making up new words to a song. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so music has been something that has been in my family, in my life for as long as I can remember. And if you look at like old pictures or things of my family, you'll see that they Mm -hmm. have gone you know there's pictures of my grandpa as a young man holding a guitar which he never learned how to play he just (laughs) holds it and strums he's not like me with them drums (laughs) we won't tell people (laughs) uh (laughs) but uh yeah so that it's it's just uh you know the whole family has been singing and making music so it's just like in the fabric of what we do. Well, for me, where I would say church, you mm-hmm. know, really church. And my family, we did, you know, do um, a lot of family gatherings and family reunions and stuff. But let's just be honest. I see the whole family at a reunion less than I go to church because I go to church every Sunday, every Tuesday, you know. So <laughs> that's where, you know, and it was like and then the, the music at the cookouts or the music mm-hmm. and the family gatherings in the house always wasn't the same type, you know, because you go to church for me anyway. It would be very loud. So it would stick out. It'll be a very good impression. <laughs> I'm expecting that like in your family, though, like when you're growing up, mm-hmm. that your folks would sing along to the radio. Yeah. You know, that's that's. You know, it can't be more important than that. As like it becomes normal mm-hmm. as a little child to to sing. It's just what you do. That's right. And so when you get to church, you know, I think that uh, it's so. It's like, well, of course we sing. Yeah, we sing at home. Now we sing at church. That's what we do. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And like you said, sing in the car. I got a fond memory. <laughs> oh no. Hi, <laughs> Lord, forgive me, Grandma. Forgive me, Grandma. Forgive me. But let me tell you, my grandmother was in the car and she was singing uh, Prince, mm. uh, 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 Kiss, I believe it was. <laughs> and I recorded it on my iPad without her knowing. And she was, I mean, she was like, You don't have to be 
<laughs> I mean, she was going in, Josh. She was going in, and I got it all on record. If only, if I can insert a, a sound bite right here, I, I think I will. I just want your extra time and yeah. Oh, child, she tore it up. She tore it up. But yeah, that's just like you said, singing on the radio. And like on Sunday mornings, the way I would wake up, you know, because during the week, per se, um, when I was at home with like my parents and everything, you know, we wouldn't listen to the radio. Now, mm-hmm. we would listen to the radio in the car mm-hmm. on the way to school, 95.9. I think at the time it was a Ricky Smiley morning show. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm bringing it back. That's so long ago, elementary school. <laughs> Jesus. But, you know, we would listen to the radio then, but in the morning we watched the news, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Fox 45 and all that stuff. So I really didn't wake up to music until I got my own um, phone and mm-hmm. stuff like that, my own iPad. And then Wi-Fi became a thing because, <laughs> I'm be honest, we didn't have Wi-Fi in the house oh, until sure. I was... Uh, in 2011, 2012, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it wasn't a thing. So we really didn't have all of these things. I didn't even get a touchscreen phone until 2011. Mm-hmm. So I definitely didn't know about no Pandora and <laughs> Spotify and, you know, all of right. that stuff. So, yeah, it was basically just just like you said, family and church, basically. Family and church. We can hear music, okay? Mm-hmm. Our families can do it. Um, friends can do it. Church can do it. But when do we actually take interest for ourselves? Because I know that the time period of when I first heard music, which was probably when I was, you know, straight out the womb, basically, Mm -hmm. to when I actually started saying, oh, I'm not shy anymore. I want to pursue this. I want to try it. You know, Mm -hmm. I want to be interested in it. I want to do something with it. It was a very far gap. I mean, it's like like a decade of a gap, you know. So that's what I want to talk about next. You know, when when did you exactly take interest? Or did you don't have to say exactly as in like the year or anything? Right, no, it was about 1822. <laughs> the Civil War camp was. Oh, no. No. Um, you know me well enough now mm-hmm. to know that I don't lack for. Uh, I'm not a shy, quiet person that hides. Mm-hmm. So I can remember singing for things and like trying for solos in preschool and kindergarten. And, mm-hmm. you know, this was back in the day before people realized the importance of like being respectful of other people's cultures. Uh And so, you know, I remember my kindergarten, yeah, kindergarten program, music program, and we dressed up as Native Americans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the diversity at the school I grew up at, now it was a little tiny school. (laughs) Okay. My town has 350 people in it. My uh, my school was consolidated. There were 200 students, kindergarten through 12th grade. Mm-hmm. And um, and so there were 17 people in my grade. Good God. Yeah, a little tiny. That is In tiny. middle of Nebraska. Ugh. Diversity in this town, I, I always say, is some of the white people were Lutheran and some of the white people were Methodist. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know about them. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, there was no broader cultural context, and so it was entirely acceptable that we to these folks that we would dress our our five year olds and six year olds up in, you know, pretend vests made of uh, paper grocery sacks mm-hmm. and stick feathers in our hair and sing and <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know. But I remember that because mm-hmm. even though looking back on it, it's really offensive. Yeah, as a little kid. <laughs> It was just fun. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you know better, you do better, yeah. right? But then... And we don't... We, we're not going to charge you as a child. We're not going <laughs> to do that. Well, yeah. And, and, you know, maybe they didn't know better. Yeah. But I think they do better now. Amen. Uh, but then, yeah, you go on and all the... You know, through my life and that... Um, when I was in seventh grade or eighth grade, that's when I knew like I wanted to make music a career or mm-hmm. a part of my life. But you know, when I, when, I, when I was little, and this is funny because everybody says, Reggie, you, you got to be kidding me when I tell this. I was shy. Okay? Well, I believe it. Okay, you, you can believe it. Thank well, you. I'm, I met you we were first year here. Yeah. You were shy then too. I just didn't see what I'm saying. Just, and, that's, and people listening are probably like, Reg, I knew him in high school. I knew him in elementary school. I mean, he's shy. It's a family go. We listen to this like, he is shy. I wish he would have stopped talking my ear off if he was shy. <laughs> <laughs> he could have been shy at home. How about that? <laughs> yeah, we wish he had been. <laughs> How about that? But no, I mean, yeah, I, I was. You know, I'm very, I call myself an uh, introverted extrovert. Mm-hmm. That's what I call myself. Because I know that I don't want to be embarrassed. Mm-hmm. Okay? And that's basically where it started from. Like, I don't like to be embarrassed, you know? 
I'll run away from things all my life. I did it in church for years, okay? I mean, from a very from a child, they 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 want you to t- pop out the womb, and if they say stand on the choir, if they want you to usher, if they want you to greet at the door, they want you to give a salute to the pastor, child, Mm -hmm. they want you to do it, okay? I mean, and rightfully so, you shouldn't be that scared. It's just, you know, a certain time, and and it's done. But they want you to pray and everything. I was scared, child, but I didn't want to be embarrassed. So once I got to an age where it was kind of like, okay, you can't run no more. You know, I was able to do everything in my power. Like, mom, I don't want to go to church today. Because my mom didn't go to church. My grandmother took me to church. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's not my mother's mother anyway. So it was kind of like, you know, it was a distance there. Whereas sure. though if one said something, then, you know, one couldn't overtrump the other, really. So it was like, if I told my mom, I don't want to go to church, you know. And my church members probably going to listen to this and be like, oh, that's what he was doing all of the years? I'd be like, mom, let's go to the mall. Or not, I wouldn't tell her, let's go to the mall. But if we were going to the mall, I wouldn't tell her I had something to do. Uh-huh. Okay, uh-huh. I, and I would text and be like, can't make it tonight. I'm so sorry. I can't <laughs> sing. I can't pray because I have to go to the mall with my mother. And they'd be like, oh, okay, okay. But, you know, so that right there, I was very shy, and I didn't want to be embarrassed after I got to a certain age. So I kind of just worked it out, mm. you know? And through my working it out, like it's a detour, through my detours of working it out, I kind of found an interest in it. You know, I was like, okay, this is – this may be a little something, you know. And then once you get past that middle school age, as mm-hmm. you said, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me tell you, you don't ever want to be singing sometimes in that middle school age. It'd be terrible. But once I got, like, to ninth grade mm-hmm. and above, you know, I was like, okay, my voice is starting to – I can kind of control this now. You know, I can I can play with it. I can hit certain notes. And I started to fall in love with it. Now, do I think I'm the best singer? No. I'm more of a, uh, I'm, when I get on stage, um, I can be seen as more of a Beyonce. <clears throat> I'm a great performer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no offense, B, no offense. You, you can still sing, right? You can still sing. <laughs> That's, we always joke. Some people sing soprano. Some people sing alto. I sing also. <laughs> also. Also. Here and there and also <laughs> here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I feel that. Oh, somewhere there exists. An, a video of me as the master of ceremonies for our sixth grade graduation. Uh-huh. And they showed this at my high school graduation. Wait, sixth grade graduation? Uh huh. Okay, that was back. Okay, when they yeah. had the. It well, was with elementary school, sixth right. grade. Okay, yeah, gotcha, we didn't gotcha. have. We just had a junior high. Gotcha, gotcha. Go ahead. Yeah, so, and it is the most. It was the most cringy thing. <laughs> you know, just little kids, squeak, 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 you know, and oh God, I hope, I hope that. I hope that tape is burnt in the fire. <laughs> I hope it still lives. <laughs> no. I, I hope it lives. I hope it resurrects on Easter Sunday. <laughs> right. Raises from the tomb. Yep. Right there at the dinner table. <laughs> hey, Scott, do you remember this? I know you're a doctor now, but let's show you where you came from. What do you um look for, though, when, like, finding new music mm. or, you know, when you think about your favorite artist? Like, what is it that really gets you that really attracts you right that's a good question um and it's actually a really simple answer Mm -hmm. and it's why i'm a choral music person Mm -hmm. is the thing i look for is the text Mm -hmm. and if it's a meaningful text i'll do it and if it's a stupid text i won't it doesn't matter how good it sounds it's a waste of time if you're singing music no matter how pretty it is okay Uh this is great well, it's like chewing bubble gum. It doesn't do any good. And it keeps you occupied, but that's yep. about it. But. Yeah. And you and it is important, okay, that it comes through music instead of just through words all the time. You know, cuz not let's just be honest. I'm more people listen to music than they probably listen to people. Okay. <laughs> right. I, you see people walking around campus all day long what they got in their ears? Headphones, okay? Wax. Earbuds. Exactly. What you say? Earwax. Ear <laughs> That too, but that's why they that's why they got to turn up their music so loud because they got too much earwax. But you know, and it's because people listen to music more. So if music can bring light through the text, like like you said, it's it's a lot of meaningless. Mm-hmm. I mean, it has a meaning. We're not gonna say that, but <laughs> the meaning is a lot less. Okay, it's more of just a little pop out here, just a little pop music. That's how I think they call some pop music pop music, just to get you pop, you know, <laughs> and then it sets you back down, you know. So it's like if they can put it in music, then I feel as though it would convey a lot better to people and people would understand it more. But you guys, you know, we are so glad that you all came and joined us today for this podcast. We hope that you learned something about music. You know, it was important to bring Dr. Uh, Dr. Scott, Dr. Reeker. (laughs) 
Call me. Just don't call me late for lunch. Hey, man, you have a day because I, I hope they don't call me late for lunch, child. I need. Do I? Is the COVID testing open today? I need no. to get my nose. No, not today. Just no. Thursday. Yep. Okay, I need to go get my nose. I I went to go get it yesterday, and I was too late. And I said, I said, oh, Joe, Joe, Joe. He said, hey, Reggie. I said, is the COVID testing still going on? He said, oh, unfortunately, no. I said, nope. God is speaking. I wasn't, didn't want to be abused today, child. <laughs> nothing in my nose that don't belong. There exactly. I don't like it. I don't like it. But you know, we're so glad, like I said, that y'all could join. And we hope you learned something, um, you know, about music, about the importance of what you should look for, um, things that stick out to you. Think about these things in your personal time. You know, it's good to reflect on them and just see why do I listen to, to this kind of music? You know, what is the meaning? What do I feel when I listen to this kind of music? Is this helping mm. or is it not? You know, or is it helping to reveal stuff that I was I'm not able to face by talking? You know, things of that nature. So, you guys, we hope you enjoy. We hope you enjoy. Once again, clap right where you are for Dr. Scott Rieger, you guys. Say goodbye to the people, Dr. Hey, thanks so much. It's been fun. No, oh, right. Yes, it has been fun. He tried to get me to join that choir. Did y'all see how he tried to sneak that in there? <laughs> It meets Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Yeah, he's still trying. I should, you know what? He better be glad I ain't with my black belt because I would whoop him. I wore my little soft belt today. But see y'all. Have a great one. We're going to get you yet, man. You are something else. I hope you know that.